His parents had taken him and fled to the north. At the time, Nelson Valdez was an infant, and so was the revolution. And now, a quarter of a century later, Nelson had returned to Cuba, to the land of his birth. Every morning, he left the hotel in Havana and drove the, rode the guagua, the bus, number 18, to the Jose Marti Library where he read about Cuba all day. At the end of the day, he caught the bus and returned to the hotel. One afternoon, the bus came to a screeching halt at an intersection, and all the passengers who were startled wondered what was happening. And then they realized the bus driver had seen this magnificent woman crossing the street and was mesmerized by her. He watched her as she walked into the, the ice cream parlor and came out with an ice cream cone and he and the passengers watched as the woman leaned up against the building and watched as she licked her tongue delicately along the cold treat. The driver turned to the men on the bus and said, excuse me please, but I must see to this. And he left the bus. And as he left, the people on the bus started making bets as to whether he could engage the young woman in conversation or not. The driver ambled across, approached the young woman, and everyone could see that he was talking to her, but apparently making no headway. And they continued to bet with each other. And then at one point, they saw almost an imperceptible nod from the woman. And the driver turned toward the bus and gave them a thumbs up sign. And they cheered. But their cheers faded as the man, as the driver, went back into the ice cream parlor, came back out with two ice cream cones, gave one to the young woman, and arm in arm, they moved off and around the building. And then the passengers got impatient. And they started shouting. And finally one leaned over to the driver's seat and leaned on the horn with all his might. But no driver. And then from the back of the bus came a woman with an air of authority and a shape similar to that of a bowling ball. Marched up to the front of the bus, plopped herself down in the driver's seat, put the bus in gear, and drove the route. And she stopped and let the passengers off as they needed to. When she came to her stop, she got off and one of the other passengers took over. And so it went. Nelson Valdez was the last stop. But by that time, he had forgotten all about the library. I got that story from Eduardo Galeano. And while it's a fiction, of course, I resonated with the feeling in that story from my limited and brief experience in Cuba. In the year 2000, I took a bicycle trip that was licensed by the United States and went with a small group of people and we toured the eastern province, western province of Pinar del Rio, about 300 miles, about eight days and the kind of hospitality and laid-back attitude permeated our whole trip. I have reflected on that story from time to time since I came home. 
Then seven years later, I took another trip, and I've talked about this before in many stories, to uh, Cuba with the Pastors for Peace. It's a group that uh, does two things. It takes humanitarian aid to Cuba, and it travels without a license as a protest against a law, an embargo, the economic bar embargo, that we consider both immoral and unjust. Now, I have no ties in Cuba. None of my family, as far as I know, were ever there. My reason for participating in that trip was, number one, to help people who have been disadvantaged by the embargo that we have imposed on them. And the other is, as an American citizen, to defend my right to travel to any country in the world, a right that my government now restricts me from. And just incidentally, my ancestors back in the 800s, when the Magna Carta was developed, were guaranteed that right. That's the serious side, of course. I hope you enjoy the story. It's light. I cannot find any deep, profound meaning in it. I just enjoyed the story and wanted to pass it on to you. And I hope as you hear the story and as you hear what I've said about Cuba, that you'll be prompted to think more about our relationship to a beautiful, wonderful, friendly people to the South.